We're back with section 6-3, biodiversity. So the value of biodiversity. Biodiversity is the sum total of genetically based variety of all organisms in the biosphere. And there are three main types of biodiversity. Uh, ecosystem diversity, which includes the variety of habitats, communities, and ecological processes in the living world. Species diversity, the number of different species in the biosphere. And scientists have discovered about 1.5 million uh, species and still believe that there are at least a million more to discover. And then there's genetic diversity, which is the sum total of all different forms of genetic information carried by all organisms living on Earth. So biodiversity is one of Earth's greatest natural resources. Species of many kinds have provided us with foods, industrial products, and medicine and medicines, including painkillers, antibiotics, heart drugs, antidepressants, and anti-cancer drugs. Unfortunately, there are a great number of threats to biodiversity. Human activity can reduce biodiversity by altering habitats, hunting species to extinction, in introducing toxic compounds into food webs, and introducing foreign species to new environments. So extinction is when a species disappears from all or part of its range, and an endangered species is a species in danger of going extinct. Okay, habitat alteration. Developed land destroys natural habitats, which supply organisms' needs and are a limited resource. Species' long-term survival depends on the preservation of their habitat, and then as the habitats disappear, so do the organisms living in them. And then habitat fragmentation is when ecosystems are split into pieces, and each piece of a habitat re remaining becomes a biological island, i.e. Central Park, a, the small patch of grass and trees surrounded by New York City. So another threat to biodiversity is the demand for wildlife products. So the US now protects endangered animals, but other countries still hunt them for their meat, hides, and horns. An example of this is the white rhino, which is a protected animal. There, are, there were a few left in zoos in the United States. However, uh, in Africa, where they're native to, they were hunted to extinction. So um, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species is a convention that, uh, in 1987, banned international trade aid in products derived from a list of endangered species so they can no longer be exported or imported into countries. Um, pollution is another threat to biodiversity, and many forms of pollution can threaten biodiversity. One of the worst, however, is the toxic compounds which can accumulate in the tissues of organisms. An example of this is the pesticide DDT. So it, when it first appeared, it, uh, it seemed to be the perfect chemical pesticide. It w protected crops from insects, and there were, at the start, no negative effects. However, it was extremely bad uh, later on and killed a lot of animals. So it resulted from biological magnification. So the concentrations of a harmful substance increase in organisms at higher trophic levels in a food web or food chain. So think about it like this. The same amount of chemicals starts off at the lowest trophic level, and then t in, at the lowest trophic level, which then the next highest trophic level only has about 10% of the biomass from the trophic level below. However, the same amount of chemicals. So the chemicals go up 10 times in each trophic level until you get to the top where it can be t a thousand, 10,000 times higher than what it was when it first started, or the concentration. And then another one of the biggest threats to biodiversity is uh, invasive species. And these are species that are not native to the area. They were brought over either on purpose or by accident, and they re reproduce rapidly and take over the native species' habitats. So conserving biodiversity. Conservation is the wise management of natural resources, including the preservation of habitats and wildlife. And this, the conservationists seek to protect biodiversity. And some of their strategies are uh, captive breeding programs where they breed animals in captivity and then when the, uh, the offspring is deemed strong enough, it is released into the wild. And, now, and today, conservation efforts focus on protecting entire ecosystems as well as single species. Protecting an ecosystem will ensure that the natural habitats and interactions of many different species are preserved at the same time.
So the U.S. has extensive systems of national parks, forests, and other protected areas, such as marine sanctuaries. Okay, 6-4, charting a course for the future. So, for most of history, environmental change was a local affair. You would hunt in, a, in your area, you would hunt deer to an extinction, then there would be no more deer. Okay, you would go hunt something else. However, today, it's now become a huge global affair, and many researchers are gathering data to monitor and evaluate the effects of human activities on important systems in the biosphere. And two of these systems are the ozone layer and the global climate system. The ozone layer has been, uh, is the high concentration of ozone gas high in the atmosphere, and this absorb, absorbs harmful UV radiation from sunlight. Um, there's new evidence, not new, it's old evidence uh, showing ozone depletion. In the early 1970s, scientists discovered a hole over Antarctica in the atmosphere, and this was letting in a lot more UV radiation than was good. So, one of the main causes of ozone depletion is uh, chloro chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, which uh, damage the ozone layer. And these were once widely used as propellants in aerosol cans, coolants in fridges, freezers, and air conditioning, and that were also found in the production of plastic foams. So they were uh, banned, and then after, once they've been banned, we've seen... Uh, the data has shown the ozone holes are actually shrinking and are predicted to disappear in 50 years. Another, uh, another, um, another thing we have to worry about is the global climate change. So the global atmospheric temperatures have risen 0 0.6 degrees Celsius since 1980, and although this may not sound like a lot, it's actually a very big deal. There are certain types of plants and animals that need a very specific temperature to survive. Um, and the global warming is just defined as an increase in average temperature of the biosphere. So there are there is evidence of the global warming. There's been the melting of polar ice caps, the atmospheric temperature we've seen risen, temperatures have been getting hotter almost everywhere. And we've had stranger weather occurrences with dry with very dry and very wet winters. So current global warming is most likely due to human activity that adds carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. And we talked about this earlier, greenhouse gases are good, however, we are adding too much of them and causing ozone holes in the ozone layer and other atmospheric problems. So some of the possible effects of global warming, um, it may cause the sea levels to rise and flood coastal areas, and it will also bring about droughts in North America and other countries north of the equator. So the value of a healthy biosphere, as we can see, we don't want flooding, we don't want droughts, we don't want holes in the ozone layer. By keeping the biosphere healthy, we can avoid serious problems that can arise, uh, and great efforts are being made. There are new restrictions and limits placed on factories every year, new waste management programs, and all uh, the pe people are, doing, are making great strides to try to improve the biosphere.